Many of us moved to Florida for the beautiful waterways, but you need to hear this. Scientists say seagrass is dying at an alarming rate. That affects everything from the health of old Tampa Bay to the lives of manatees. Jack Royer is live for us in Tampa, and I'm curious, Jack, we've covered this story before and talked about the seagrass and the devastating impacts on manatees. Is there anything that can be done to reverse this? Quite a bit. Scientists say, in fact, all of us, Jen, play a role in making sure this doesn't get any worse than it already is because, as you note, seagrass is very important. It's a food for everything from shrimp to manatees. And now, in fact, the lack of seagrass is blamed for over a thousand manatee deaths in some parts of Florida. Now, researchers hope that gets your attention before this problem gets worse. You don't often see it, but seagrass is critical to Old Tampa Bay, Florida's largest open water estuary. But new research shows the plant's health is at an all-time low. Without seagrass, without good water quality, you know, it's hurting our pocketbooks, it's hurting our health, and it's hurting our fun. Maya Burke with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program says the plant plays a part in everything from the quality of our water to the food on our table. It's also a really important nursery ground for a lot of the commercial and recreationally important fish that we like to fish for for fun or to feed our families. In the past few years, over 4,100 acres worth have died in Old Tampa Bay alone. That's about the size of Davis and Harbor Islands combined. Why the concern? Manatees are herbivores, vegetarian. On Florida's east coast, the lack of seagrass is now being blamed for over 1,000 manatee deaths from starvation, affecting life up and down the food chain. All the things that we really appreciate about um, our water around Florida is dependent upon healthy ecosystems and seagrass is the main reason that we have those healthy ecosystems out there. Restoration efforts are ongoing with scientists blaming algal blooms for blocking sunlight needed for the seagrass to grow. Now hoping to reverse the troubling trend. We value clean water as a community and we need to make the requisite investments to make sure that we don't lose ground in terms of protecting water quality, seagrass resources and those things that we love about Tampa Bay. So what can we all do? Scientists say really small, simple changes make a big difference, like limiting how much you drive or not fertilizing your yard, for example, during the rainy season. In fact, that's why there's a ban on fertilizing during those months in many counties in our area. They're just hoping that those small changes can add up to stop this problem from getting worse. Live in Tampa, Jack Royer, 8 on your side.